thank you. Um, right, as advertised, I'm Dr. Charlie Ball. I'm the head of higher education intelligence at Graduate Prospects. Prospects is the sector body, sector body for the um, uh, of Universities UK. We're uh, themed around employability um, and support for anybody and everybody who's interested in finding uh, students and graduates and by graduates we mean anybody who leaves university or the higher education system work. And head of higher education intelligence is a longhand word for phrase for data nerd. Um, so I'm really data nerd for, um, for, for graduate prospects and, and we're the body um, charged with supporting careers and employability. And I'm going to talk to you about how um, most of the underlying premises around higher education are incorrect. Um, so it's a, going to be quite a cheerful, um, cheerful piece, piece of work in which I challenge everything you knew about university. Now, when we think about higher education, and one of the things, that, one of the things that's a little bit of an issue when we're, in, when we're in the academy is that we do have a tendency to think that everybody's like us. And also, we also see um, a lot of news, news reports, we see a lot of media reports talking about the ubiquity of degrees and how um, students and graduates and, and, and going to university and all of this kind of experience is so very common that it dominates uh, the economy, it dominates the population. We've got hundreds of thousands of graduates. We've got so many graduates. We've got far too many. Universities are minority sports. About 39% of the UK population has had a post -8, formal post-18 education experience primarily through university. About 44% of the workforce has been to university. So um, right from the word go, we know that um, there are, you're far more likely to have a job if you go to university than if you don't. You're actually very much more likely to have a job if you go to university than if you don't, particularly in the current economy, and it's unlikely that that situation is going to change anytime soon. The interesting thing is, although we've got 44% of the workforce with a higher education qualification, about 46% of the workforce is in a job that is classed as professional level. Now, we've only got 15 minutes and it's not even the subject of this conversation, so I'm not going to talk about the difference between a professional level job and a graduate level job. If you, find, if you get three labour market experts into a room to discuss what a graduate job is, um, you, in, within half an hour you'll have four definitions and a fist fight. Um, so what we'll do is we'll stick with the definition of professional level, which is about 90 to 95% correct. So I'm going to talk a lot about professional level employment here. And I'm going to talk a lot in quite sweeping terms about different populations of graduates. Um, but the main thing we're going to talk about is four groups of graduates. Now, if you think of the, if you think of the way that we uh, organise higher education, the way we think about higher education, the way the university is set up, the way the university system is set up, and particularly the way that the agenda around metrics and league tables and so forth is set up, the standard way that you are supposed to interact with the university goes a little bit like this. You are a young person around about the age of 17 or 18, um, and you start, you're going to apply to university through UCAS. Um, and you're from probably... Uh, an urban or suburban background somewhere in, let's say, for the sake of argument, round here, you're from, oh, let's think about it, we'll say Worcester. We'll say Worcester. Worcester's a perfectly reasonable place to choose. So you're from Worcester. So you look at, you, you're from Worcester, you look at your, um, you look at your, uh, uh, your league tables, you think, oh, do you know, I'd like to study maths. I'd like to study a maths degree. Um, so where am I going to look? Oh, I want to study these different modules. And this is the bit where my analogy falls down because I don't know what modules go into a maths degree. But I want to study these particular modules because I want to look at probability in order to go into the, in, in, or to go into the labour market, to go and do the things that a maths graduate does, like like accountancy, for example, um, or um, going to the business and finance sector, which is the major, major outcome for maths. So you look at all the league tables, you think, oh, do you know, uh, this has got the right modules, this has got the right modules, this has got the great courses. Um, I'll go to Newcastle University. So you go to Newcastle University, you study maths, and you, um, you do very well, and then when you finish, you, uh, or when you, you come to your final year, you go and talk to Mark Linton and his team at New Newcastle University, you're on the careers and employability team, and you have a look at, at all the job options are available to you um, and you go to graduate training schemes, uh, uh, graduate training uh, open days and you apply for graduate training schemes then eventually you get a job and just to bust the stereotype you don't get a job in London, you go to Leeds to go and work which is a big business and finance centre, a lot of students in the north of England go to work in Leeds. 
Um, and that's the way it's supposed to work. And then the lead tables, the metrics, um, judge your success based on your employability and your salary. Um, you do earn a reasonable amount more in Leeds than you do in many other parts of the north of England. Um, so your salary metric's quite good. And so it's, an, it's a nice, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a rational model. Everybody's making rational decisions based on really good data. Because one of the things that we, we, we have in the UK is we have one of the most heavily monitored, probably the most heavily monitored, most heavily metricized higher education system in the world. We have more data on everything than anyone else. So it's a brilliant model. Everybody's making these rational decision makers and there's only one problem with it and it is that it is completely wrong because that's not what people do at all. Uh, there is a group of people who do that but it's quite small. In fact, it's really surprisingly small. So I'm going to talk about the, the, the four major groups of graduates and, and we're, going to, we're going to base them on where they work. So if we, I'm going to use the West Midlands as a model because here we are. I know it sometimes doesn't feel like it, but strictly speaking, here in Kiel, you're in the West Midlands, not quite the Northwest. You're in the West, West Midlands. So we're going to talk about the West Midlands and I'll talk a little bit about Staffordshire, which is, where you're, where, uh, which is a little bit more on a micro level. So if you think about where people who pe people work, where they studied and where they were domiciled, the first group are the loyals. Now, the loyals don't move. The loyals, um, your loyals here in, here, here, in, here in Kiel in the West Midlands will be from uh, relatively nearby. They'll be from the West Midlands. Um, we'll call them local. Strictly speaking, local in this, in this case uh, means in generally themes around a travel to work area. So this is heavily influenced by public transport networks. I'm afraid, Kiel. Sorry about that. Your public transport network is actually really quite important in this. Um, and having used it quite a lot, Arguably, Kiel doesn't have the best public transport network in and out of the university. So that does affect some of the points that we're making here. So the loyals, 45% of all graduates in 2016-17 went to their local university and then got a, got a job within a travel to work area, usually about 25 to 30 miles of that institution. It is the most common experience for graduates. They go to the local interview, inter, uh, institution and they work locally. It is likely in the next few years to become the dominant experience for graduates. For most, for many institutions in this country, this is what most graduates do. So they are older on average than other groups. Nearly 20% of this group are over 30 on graduating. They are likely to be women. They're more likely, and I apologize for using the, using the term after hearing your very moving and powerful talk there, anyway, but I've used Ben there as a catch-all to say they're not white. They are generally not white. And actually for this group, there is not a lot of difference between different um, ethnic groups. Some of the others there is actually um, and I've tried to draw that out but I'm trying to draw in a lot of characteristics. They're also and I'm not placed on there but they're also rather more likely to have disability than other groups. They are not in the West Midlands they're not actually particularly likely to be from a low participation background um, compared to students in general. That's partly due to some of the communities particularly some of the relatively affluent um, market town communities in places like Stafford um, and, and Shrewsbury and other areas that are actually reasonably, on, on, on many of the metrics, reasonably affluent. Um, very likely to work in the public sector and most likely of all the groups to return to a previous employer on graduation because quite a lot are experienced. This is the prevailing experience of students and graduates in the UK. This is not, they do not in general look at league tables. They don't care about league tables. They're going to go to a university. They're going to go to their local university. Um, if they are in Staffordshire, they're likely to come here or to Staffordshire University. Or maybe if they're feeling really, really adventurous, they might go to Wolverhampton. Um, <coughs> they're not going to work anywhere else. They're not going to work. They're not going to work very far. Some of these groups, to be fair, are willing. Some of, some of the Staffordshire um, loyals are willing uh, to travel as far as Birmingham for a job. But no further, they are not going to, they're not going anywhere else. The next group of the stayers. Now, here at Keele, these will be people who come from outside the region, come to a study here at Keele University, and then stay locally. They don't go home on graduation. They stay locally to work. They're the smallest group of graduates, about 13% of graduates, about 11% of graduates working in the West Midlands. Um, and they are very heavily concentrated in university towns around universities. They're the youngest group on average. Well over 85% of them are under 24 on graduating. They're also pretty likely to have studied 
on full time. They are more likely than average not to be white. And actually, certain groups are particularly likely to be stayers. Black Africans are more likely than any other group um, to be, or more like black Africans to be, to be stayers, to move away from their home areas and to stay near their universities than any other group, which is very interesting, and I don't know why that is. Most West Midland stayers are actually from low participation backgrounds, which is very interesting because they are very unlikely to be in non-graduate employment. They're likely to be in health, they're likely to be in business finance, and they're likely to go into a range of very niche professions that require quite specialist qualifications. And a lot of people in this group seem to have taken a very considered view of their careers right from the start and said, I want to get out of my hometown. I want to get out of my hometown, which is often quite, or my home area, which is often quite deprived or has poor um, options. And they've taken quite niche and specialist qualifications in order to... Um, uh, target quite niche and specialist careers, which are often in shortage. Also, as a consequence, this is the group that are most likely to come to your career service. This is the group that are most likely to come to careers and employability events, most likely to use careers, um, career specialisms, but they are least likely to use personal contacts, perhaps because they have less social capital in the first place. So do be mindful when you are um, running careers and employability events, it's quite likely that it is this group who are the heaviest users. They have come to this university and they're looking for something quite nearby. They don't want to go home. They're very positive about their reason for career choice and a lot of their career choice are heavily place-based. They're the least likely to, to stipulate salary purely as the reason for taking their job. They are often quite place and community oriented. So even though they've moved away, they are still looking for a place or a community um, that, they, that they enjoy or where they've had formative experiences. And hence, they, they often stay close to universities and to their peer groups. Part of the reason why they don't go home, why they don't want to go home is summed up by the returners who are a quarter of all graduates and 28% of graduates in the West Midlands. This is the group who are, by some considerable distance, the most likely to struggle in the jobs market. They go away to university and then they come home on graduation. Now there are actually two groups of returners that do need to, do, that, that do need to be taken into account. Um, they're quite young, they're white, they're almost all white. Um, they are often from affluent backgrounds, but there are two groups of returners here. There is one group who are very clearly acting quite like the stayers. They are intending to get a job close to home. They've had a look at the options available to them and they have quite deliberately targeted courses, often very um, professionally oriented in things like, particularly in things like accountancy, medicine, quite a lot of doctors are returners. Um, quite often in um, social care and education so that they can come home and get jobs. But, and particularly the more affluent groups, they've gone away to university to study a, study a qualification, often quite vocationally oriented, but not always. Um, and they face it, and, and it appears, judging by their career choices, that they've thought, oh, it'll be all right. It'll all be all right on the night. They don't do very much... Um, they do less than other, other students in terms, in terms of engaging in careers and employability events. Um, they, they, um, least, they're, they're less likely than many to take work experience. Um, and then they finish their university career with their qualifications and then they come home. Often, as I say, to quite affluent parts of the country, but not necessarily ones with very good jobs markets. So they'll often go to um, affluent market towns, the commuter belt, uh, outside the commuter belt, outside large cities. They'll, um, here in the West Midlands, they'll often go back to places like Stafford or they'll go back to um, uh, wealthy parts of Staffordshire or Shropshire um, or, or Warwickshire and then find there aren't very many jobs around. And they struggle. And then they're out in the countryside um, and they don't have access to careers and employability support and they struggle in the jobs market. They're least positive about the, uh, about the reasons for their career choices. Um, they often are they often in non-graduate employment um, nearly 30% of them start their careers outside um, professional level employment. Um, quite concentrated in, in quite low quality jobs in retail and in the service sector. They're much the most likely group of graduates to find themselves on zero hours contracts as well.
Now, these are the graduates who do what they're supposed to. 18% of graduates, they, they go away to university and they go somewhere else to go and get a job. 43% of all of them work in London. These are the only group who are most likely to be men. All the other groups are most likely to be women, but this group are more likely to be men. They're pretty likely to be white. They're pretty likely to be from... Um, they're, they're, they're pretty likely to be in very good quality jobs. They take the best paid jobs. Um, they are likely to engage directly with employers, although they do use career services quite a lot because they're quite job oriented because they are the most likely to choose jobs solely on salary. But they are not the happiest group. The returners are the happier, the stayers are the happiest group, the people who stayed, often close to their friends, who chose a place as, a, uh, as their, as their uh, reason for getting a job. The incomers, and the incomers, and it's very interesting, the, because our, high, our higher education system is themed around this group, this group, less than 20% of the cohort, and it's themed around this group. The league table agenda is themed around this group. Um, the way that universities, you know, the whole, whole business model of many universities, large halls of residence for all the people who are coming in, and then um, a, lot of, a lot of support in order for people to move away, is themed around this group. But they're, they're white, <coughs> middle-class men. Very interesting, very interesting. They're also the least likely group to be in SMEs because they, 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 they take up lion's share, lion share of the large... Um, uh, the large graduate training schemes, they are, are much better paid on average. But as I say, they're not as happy as the others because they are motivated by salary. And the big secret is that people who are largely motivated by salary are never happy because they always think they can be getting paid more. And the other interesting thing is many employers are trying to screen for this group to make sure they don't recruit them because they're high maintenance. They need a lot of care and attention. You need to give them more money year on year. There are some groups that they're ideal for. Sales staff, you want your sales staff to be financially oriented, obviously. You want um, many areas of business and finance to be um, brokers, traders, this kind of thing, to be pretty financially oriented. But if you want to keep your teams together, if you want um, people for the long term, this is not necessarily the group that you want to be targeting. You want people who are going to stay in your location. You want people who are going to be staying for your industry. Because the other secret is, you know when we tell students there's no such thing for, as, as a job for life? How many of you have been with your current employer for more than 10 years? Let's see a show of hands. It's quite a lot of people, isn't it, for no such thing as a job for life? In fact, actually, if you're over 35, it's most likely... The most likely experience for anybody over 35 is to have been with your current employer for more than 10 years. And if you're over 50, it's more li most likely that you have been with your current employer for the last 20 years. And the most common reason for a graduate to leave their job last year was retirement. So this is all very, this is all, this is all very important. What does this actually mean? 58% of graduates from 2017 went to work in the region they studied, and this pattern is long-standing and it's probably increasing. 69% of graduates go to work in the region they're domiciled in, and 45% of graduates don't move at all. Graduates are not actually particularly mobile. We don't have a UK graduate labour market. The way that the graduate labour market in the West Midlands works is it is largely for students who are locally born and locally um, who, who studied locally. It doesn't, the Birmingham jobs market doesn't over, overlap in most cases with the London jobs market or even the Nottingham jobs market or the Manchester jobs market. It is discreet, it has its own character, it has its own students, and we can predict reasonably well who is likely to go and work in, in, in that jobs market. Graduates strongly favour working in places to which there's an existing connection. So it means for institutions, your local labour markets are much the most likely to employ your graduates much the most likely. You might think of yourself as a UK um, facing institution, but you're not. You're not. Most of your students will work relatively close to your university. For employers, your local institution is much the most likely to, or local institutions are much the most likely to provide your workforce. And that has a number of important factors. In the Northeast, there are no providers of occupational therapy courses at the moment. And consequently, the North East has a massive shortage of occupational therapists. If you don't have IT provision, or if you don't have local engineering provision, or if you don't have local nursing provision, as happens in parts of Wales, for example, you will not recruit those people. They will not come. They won't come. 
And so locations with little HE provision struggle to sustain a graduate labour market. And London University is a long way from London, don't really supply many graduates to London. And that makes salary metrics pretty unfair. There's no single unified graduate labor, UK graduate labour market. We should stop talking as if there is one. We should understand that the UK is a group of interlocking, um, not often overlapping, different labour markets with their own discrete characters and understand that place is really, really important to people. Thanks very much.